Now let's take a look at the DS1000 series measurement capabilities. I'm going to turn off the digital filter on channel 1. And I'm also going to disable channel 2 um, just so we have a little bit more room on the display. We can measure two channels simultaneously. It's just a lot going on on the screen for a, for a demonstration. So what we can do is hit the measure key and we're going to measure channel 1. Now what I can do is I can hit display on and that will bring up all of the measurements that I have capable uh, or enabled on that particular channel. In this case we have Vmax, Vmin, V peak to peak, uh, period frequency and a number of other measurement capabilities or uh, measurements types for that, that waveform of interest on channel 1 uh, which can be very useful. What I'd like to do now though is show you uh, how to key in on a single a single type hit measurement again and we'll di hit display off so all of those go away but now let's go to time and let's rotate down to frequency again we can pick individual measurement types uh, both in the time and the and the voltage uh, areas but time I'm gonna select frequency and then I'm also going to go to cursor and I'm gonna hit auto and now it's going to put the cursors on the screen in the position that we're actually taking the measurement. So if you have a particular, or if you have questions about where the measurement is being taken, uh, you can enable the cursors and hit that auto mode, and that's going to align the cursors on the screen, and you'll be able to tell exactly where on that waveform that frequency measurement is going to be made. Now let's take a look at some of the other cursor measurement modes. Let's go to cursor, and then out of auto, let's go to track. And what tracking is going to do, as you can see, it's actually uh, moving along with the signal. Um, I've, I've collapsed the menu for that particular function, but you can see um, as I rotate along, in this case, I'm moving channel or the, I'm moving the cursor. And the cursor actually has a time and as well as an X designation or uh, cross there. And you can see it's following the waveform, so you're getting coordinates or locations on the waveform display based on the waveform itself. And so you can also see over here we're getting some measurement changes in delta X and delta Y uh, corresponding to the position of that, of that particular cursor. Uh, we can go back and uh, highlight B, uh, and that's going to allow us to move the second cursor. And we'll get that delta between those in both X and Y. If we wanted to do something a little more manual, uh, we can go to the manual mode. And the manual mode is going to allow us to select either Y or the x-axis, and you can see they changed. Uh, let's select A, so we can move cursor A in the x, we can move cursor A in the y, see that, and we can also move both of them as a delta if we wanted to do fixed, uh, or singly, which can again be useful if you were making some measurements on your, uh, on your waveform. Now let's take a look at the reference mode. So we're going to get rid of our measurements. We're just going to go up to cursor and all, and then let's disable our measurements as well. Clear. And now uh, we just have channel one. What I'd like to do is I press the reference. I'm going to actually uh, grab a reference here, and you can select between channel one and channel two as long as channel two has been enabled, or math. Uh, we're going to stick with channel one. Now let's do external. Actually, let's do internal. And let's hit save, and now you'll see that the reference waveform, and we'll just have to move it out of the way, the reference waveform is exactly like the waveform that we've captured here. Um, you'll notice that it's also stopped. <clears throat> so it's taken a capture of a particular slice in time of that waveform as it's coming into the input, and it's replicated that here. And it can be manipulated just like a normal, I'm sorry, it can be manipulated just like the regular waveform in that we can raise it and lower it, and we can also shift it in time. Uh, that's useful if you have a particular waveform that you want to compare to another waveform. In this case, we could bring channel 2 in, uh, compare that to channel 1's reference, or we could uh, make some changes to our circuit and then compare that to channel 1 as well, or to that reference as well. Now let's take a closer look at some other functions that we have available to us. I'm going to disable reference, and I'm going to enable math. And you'll see in operate for the math menu we have a number of functions available a plus b a minus b a times b and then fft so we can do a fast fourier transform analysis of that incoming waveform um, and break it down into its frequency components let's select fft uh, again we can select channel one channel two we have different window options available to us we're going to stay with rectangle and we can split the view so we can enable a larger screen display uh, we can also select DBE VRMS, or we can go VRMS, 
and let's stick with that. Now you can see what we have now is we have frequency versus voltage, uh, and I think you can make out some of these uh, some of these up here, some of the analysis of that particular waveform. Now let's just expand it a little bit and. and We'll just go to the first three waveform or the first three frequency components that we have available to us. And by pressing the horizontal key, we'll actually get that center frequency is located at three kilohertz. So this is the three kilohertz frequency. Uh, we can rotate it down and read the center. Now we have a peak at one kilohertz, which is our fundamental, a peak at three kilohertz, and then we have a peak at five and a peak at seven, etc., etc., which is what you'd expect from a square wave. Uh, in an FFT or in the FFT or the frequency domain. Another great feature of the scope is the mask and pass fail function. So I'm going to enable the scope to run again. Disable math. I'm going to go to utility and pass fail. And pass fail is sometimes you'll come up in this main page, uh, page one. You'll see it says one of three. So let's go to two of three in the utilities menu. We'll hit pass fail. And now what we can do is create a mask. Uh, so we can go up to mask and we can actually set the number of divisions or percentage of the division that's going to be the X mask and the Y mask as well. So we'll make both of those 0 .20 divisions. Uh, we can create that mask but let's just get back up into the uh, mask setting. So we can enable that test. Now you can see by enabling the mask we have basically put a framework around the around the incoming signal that says, okay, this is what's going to be a pass area. Uh, and then we can operate that. Uh, we can pick the source. Uh, we can turn the message display on, which is going to give us a fail, number of fails, number of passes, and then the total number of waveforms. So we can operate that, and you can see that will increment. Uh, and then if we go to a fail, now we have a number of lines that are outside of that original mask and setting. I'm going to just turn that off for a second and also uh, turn the stop on output and we're going to have the output on fail. So that means that when it fails the box is going to stop and you'll see it will quit taking waveforms. So we've gone into stop mode and now we've only had one fail but that fail has stopped the instrument from taking any more data. It's also uh, through the output on the back of the instrument it's also disabled or, or sent a failed signal. Uh, we've, we've configured it to do that by using the output um, output fail and then we can also do an output on pass if we'd like so very flexible uh, you can set up the can set up the scope to run you know for a long period of time and you can check to see the number of waveforms that have passed or failed over a given period of time which can be useful for troubleshooting uh, some problematic signals